Isn't she beautiful? Yeah. They found the arms, you know. What do you suppose she was doing with them? Well, she was showing Apollo where to shove his missile. <laughs> Amazing, you know. If she hadn't lost her arm, she'd never be famous. No. Probably be a lamp base in an Athens massage parlor, you know? I think we're the last ones here. Mm. You ever get the eerie feeling that as soon as you leave, they all come alive? Hmm? I wonder what they'd say. my left tit. <laughs> I don't think we should use that word, you know? Why? What's the matter with it? Well, you know what I mean. I think we ought to use boob. It's softer. Are you absolutely firm about that? <laughs> I mean, I don't want this bit to flop. <laughs> I don't think we should jiggle with it. Where did you get lines like that? Memory. <laughs> okay. You've got that out of your system. Can we go on now, please? Hmm? Okay, I'm sorry, but really, I don't think boob has the same impact. It doesn't hit you in the face. Depends how tall you are. Ah. <laughs> Remember, we're a family show here, you know. Yeah, but if it wasn't for tits, there'd be no families. I mean, ask any man in the universe. <laughs> Felix, honest, I don't think the word is offensive. Well, let me think about that, okay? Mm. Well, come on. We've got to do that scene where you audition your material for the producers of the Royal Charity Show. Come on, let's get moving. Yes. Make a little warm up here. Very difficult to warm up when you're a comedian. I mean, I always figure how. A singer can sing the scales, right? Dancers can stretch, which I did for a while. I took some dancing when I was in drama school. I have a healthy respect for dancers because when I took dancing, I had to wear leotards, and I respect anybody that has to wear leotards. Because <laughs> when you first see them off, they're about this big. <laughs> and what leotards do, see, is, is they take about a size 30 waist and they squeeze them down to about a size four. <laughs> now, that stuff they squeeze just doesn't disappear. It's got to go someplace, right? So it's pressed down into the leotard, you see? <laughs> Generating tremendous pressure. And once I put those on, I realize why dancers move around like that. <laughs> it's actually about the only way you can move. <laughs> and I found out that ballet is just basic hydraulics because when you bend your knees, you know you're gonna go up after <laughs> You have no choice, you see. So they taught us to study animals for movements, which I'd always done anyway. I'd always studied animals, more from an emotional standpoint. Because I remember when I was a kid, I used to go to people's houses, and their dog would come out, and they'd say, well, he's almost human. And I used to laugh at that. And then I got to thinking, well, you know, dogs do have human qualities, or qualities I respect in human beings. They have uh, a tremendous loyalty, uh, something we can't attain. They have unconditional love. Dog doesn't care who you are, what you look like, what you smell like. In fact, dogs like it if you smell funky. They like funky odors. <laughs> they like you better then. They have compassion. That's where they differ from cats for me. Now, I like cats, but cats have no sense of humanity, you know? When's the last time you saw a guide cat? <laughs> you never will. I mean, even if they're trainable, they're just so unreliable. Where were you this morning? The man is sitting in his flat waiting for you to take him for a walk. <laughs> I don't feel like it. <laughs> I was out all night, so piss off. <laughs> Get over there and take him for a walk and be careful. Yesterday you took him out, he ended up on the roof of a garage. <laughs> Sorry, but there was a big juicy pigeon up there. I was checking out for supper. I do admire their patience, because I used to live in this place that had all these pigeons around, see? And his cat used to stalk him. And he'd lay on a roof and he'd just sit there for hours and not move. And the pigeons are stupid. Really stupid. They'd see the cat there, see? And then they'd fly away. <laughs> then they'd come right back to the same spot. Cat hadn't left. <laughs> Cat's still there going... <laughs> <laughs> this bird is stupid. <laughs> this sucker deserves to be lunch. And pigeons are there going... <laughs> Nature played a cruel trick on the pigeon. What she did was she took his neck muscles and tied them to his legs. 
So every time he walks, <laughs> he's got to do this. I always get the feeling you get home at night to the nest and go, damn, damn, my neck. But they'd be sitting outside my kitchen window looking in at me all the time. I'd find myself walking around the kitchen doing the same damn thing. <laughs> I used to stare at them. They'd stare in at me. I'd be thinking, you poor dumb bird. Maybe looking at me thinking, I think I'll go dump on his car. <laughs> <laughs> well, gentlemen, that's it. Where are the jokes? <laughs> well, I, I, I don't do jokes. You're a comedian. Comedians do jokes. Yeah, but I, I mean, my style is, um, <laughs> well, the laughs sort of come uh, naturally, you know, out of what I'm talking about. It, it, well, it's hard to explain. <clears throat> when you say the word dump, uh, you mean... Uh, he means, uh... I meant... Mm, what do you think, Mickey? Well... Mm, mm. I mean, I've done this routine hundreds of times. Nobody's ever complained. People seem to relate to it. Well, I mean, everybody's got a dog. The Queen's got hundreds of dogs. <laughs> You've probably had a dog, haven't you? No. You ain't... No. <laughs> Cat? No. Huh? Never. Pigeon? <clears throat> we have to be careful here. This isn't an ordinary show. Uh, listen, there's going to be royalty in the audience. Uh, ambassadors. Oh, maybe, but they're still human. And politicians. Okay, subhuman. <laughs> now, look, uh, Michael and I will discuss it and let you know whether or not you can do the show. Yeah, but I'm going to be on stage in six hours. Uh, don't worry about it. It'll be fine. We'll discuss it uh, Tell you what we think, and then you can just go out there and do your funny thing. Do my funny thing? Okay. Fine. Yeah. Okay. That's good. That sounds good, yeah. Yeah, that sounded fine, huh? That's good. Uh, okay. Can we change that word dump to spit, hmm? Spit? Felix, when's the last time you saw a pigeon spit? <laughs> Their sole purpose in life is to dump on everything. Mm. What's wrong? Well, there's too much swearing in this show. We've got a cat swearing, a pigeon dumping, and a statue scratching. Well, let's change tit. Huh? No, no, I say let it stand. I suggested boobs. Uh, too soft. <laughs> We've been through all that. <laughs> what do you think of bazooms? Bazooms? <laughs> Compared to what? Well, why can't you say, would somebody please scratch my bazooms? <laughs> no, nope, should only be one. What? Oh, yes, you're right. Mm. Uh, why? But it's an old comic axiom. Two bazooms itching is not as funny as one. Oh. Mm. What about breast? <sighs> it's too clinical. Mm. Sounds like something you say to the doctor. Mm. I wouldn't. Well, of course you wouldn't. You don't have any, do you? <laughs> Mind you, you keep on eating the way you are, and it's only a matter of time. I still say you can't go wrong with boobs. How about hooters? Hmm? <laughs> You never heard Hooters? You never heard of somebody say, hey, look at the Hooters on her. Yeah. It's amazing, really. Huh? Everybody says that in America. Everybody, Reagan, Nixon, Kissinger, they all say, look at the Hooters on her. <laughs> when I was at school, we used to call them bumpers. Mm. Yes, I've heard bumpers and Charlies. What mm. about, would somebody please scratch my Charlie? Haven't you heard that? Excuse yeah. me. Oh. Hate to interrupt an intense artistic discussion. Mm. Mm. Bristol, mm? would somebody please scratch my Bristol? Yeah. Oh, we were just discussing... Um, Bristol. Yes. We're looking for a euphemism for... Uh, Charlie's. Yeah. That's right. We're looking for a euphemism for uh, a euphemism. Yeah. Why don't you call them what my baby niece calls them? What's that? Dinner. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll stick with boob, I think. I vote for Bristol's. I still like tit, but in a pinch, I'll take a breast. <laughs> sound like somebody ordering a piece of chicken. Hmm? Um, oh, God, this is ridiculous. We're grown men and we can't call a spade a spade. Oh, we can call a spade a spade. What we can't do is call a tit a tit. Mm. Well, let me sleep on it and I'll... Uh, no, no jokes, right? <laughs> we'll set up for the next scene. I just want to make sure they're happy, OK? Oh, okay. Gentlemen, uh, no, no, uh, please, oh, please, yeah. sit down, uh, please. Uh, was, was that what you wanted? That was fine, fine. Uh, yeah. Only we're not sure who we're supposed to be playing. You're playing the producers of the show. What show? The Royal Charity Show. When's Kelly doing that? He's not doing that. I don't understand. Look, you're checking the material that Kelly's do doing during the show. Which show? This show. Not the Royal Charity Show. No, 
this is a show about the Royal Charity Show. It's a show within a show, okay? Uh, and, and are we in the show or in the show within the show? Both. <laughs> and you're doing it perfectly, especially your blank stares at the funny bits. What funny bits? <laughs> During Kelly's monologue. Well, which were those? Those were the bits between the bits that weren't the funny bits. You see? Oh, 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 by the way, about this word dump. No, 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 please, please, we uh, haven't got time to talk about yeah, that now. No, 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 later, please. Right, uh, let's set up for the next scene, please, with uh, Kelly, C. Mallard Nile, and the stage doorkeeper. Just to remind everybody, this is a scene where Kelly arrives at the theatre and is given his dressing room. And, uh, Q. Uh, what exactly is this supposed to be? Uh, that's the desk at the stage door. OK. Where do I stand? You stand exactly where you are. Uh, right? OK. Now, when Kelly comes in, you hand him the dressing room key. Which hand do I use? Well, that depends on whether or not you're a Muslim, really. <laughs> <laughs> what? It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. Wh which hand do you normally use? My right hand. Then use your right hand. On the other hand, I might use my left hand. Oh, God. I think if I was standing here, I might choose my left hand, unless, um... Do you want me to stay here, or do I have moves? No, no, you stay exactly where you are, OK? Now, shall we just try this, please, because time's going on. Are you ready? Stand by and cue. Okay. Here is your key, Mr... <laughs> Sorry, loves, I'm dry. Oh, God! <laughs> Blind up key. Uh, here is your key, Mr Monty. Yes, I know, I know. Uh, somehow the way that lines the Britain is bothers me. I, I don't think I'd quite say it like that. Mr. Dunstan, please have a gypsy. <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, look, you've only got one line. I mean, just say it, OK? Good, terrific. Right. Still doesn't seem right to me. Here is your key, Mr. Monteith. You're sharing a dressing room with Mr. Sandingo. Thank you. Right. Off you go. Sandingo? Who the hell's that? It's either a lavatory cleaner... Or an Australian dog act. <laughs> or some opera singer doing scales all night and driving me crazy. No, oh, calm down. Don't be so nervous. Are you kidding? You realize there's going to be people in that audience tonight whose pictures are on money? Don't worry. What do you mean, don't worry? Those people don't laugh. Nonsense. When's the last time you saw a banknote with a smiling head on it? Think about it. How long would public confidence last if a 20-pound note showed the Queen laughing? Mm. <laughs> Last a lot longer than if it showed her crying. That's yeah. fine. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. That's enough for today. Like that. yeah? yeah? Right? Like that. Mm. Thank you. See you all tomorrow. Thank you, Harmon. That was fantastic. Thank you. Okay. Here is your key, Mr. Monteith. Right hand or left hand? Ah, oh, are you going to the canteen? My dear Ivan, I am an actor. And I am going where every dedicated actor goes the minute rehearsal is completed. Home to learn your line. No, dear heart, to the pub. <laughs> now, if you would care to join me in a small libation, you would be most welcome. But I shall insist upon you drinking with both hands. I cannot bear the thought of your beer going flat whilst to agonize over which hand to you. <laughs> I always drink with my right hand. Or uh, oh, is it my left <laughs> What shall I do with these scenes? The general file? Done. Yeah. <laughs> Gentlemen, I... Oh, I hope I'm not disturbing you. You're disturbing us, but then you're a disturbing person. Mm -hmm. People are gathering in the corridor wondering what great creative process is going on in here, you know. Mm. Tell them we're writing a brand new sexual position. <laughs> Actually, we're writing a book called 101 Brand New Sexual Positions. There's the uh, missionary position. Aha! Uh -huh. There's 102. <laughs> Out of your system. Can we talk about the show, please? Hmm? Mm. Is that all right? All right. I like the scene in the museum with the Venus de Milo, with mm -hmm. um, you and Alexandra, but okay. one thing still disturbs me. If my trousers were as tight as yours, my thing would disturb me. <laughs> There's nothing happening between you two. Between who? Me and Elliot? No, between you and Alexandra. Well, I thought we agreed it was supposed to be a simple, uncomplicated relationship. <sighs> it's boring. Huh? It needs another element. Let's make her a lesbian. 
But just think of the possibilities. She comes out of the closet or the wardrobe on the show. She finds Kelly trying on her lumberjack gear and beats him up. He's flipped. <laughs> relationship, just the way it is. Yeah. No, 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 wait a minute, no, wait. She's not a lesbian, she's a nymphomaniac who is secretly married. Her husband comes back from, from the dead, finds her with Kelly <laughs> and beats him up. I hate to tamper with the relationship at all. Sure. No, 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 she's not a lesbian, she's not a nymphomaniac, it's her father. Her father's a lesbian nymphomaniac? <laughs> Much more bizarre than that. He hates comedians, right? And he comes down to the studio, finds Kelly giving his daughter a quick uh, rehearsal, and uh, beats, beats him up. up. <laughs> Too obvious, huh? Well, I've told you my thoughts about it. Have you had any thoughts about the Venus de Milo? I still like Charlie's. Yeah, I like Charlie's. I've got nothing against Charlie's. But can you imagine the Venus de Milo saying, would somebody please scratch my left Charlie? Yeah, mm. sounds like she's having trouble with the Prince of Wales. <laughs> <laughs> Bristol's. Nah, same thing. I got it. What? Nipple! <laughs> nipple? That's disgusting. Would somebody please scratch my left nipple? Disgusting! Felix, you've missed the point. Felix, they want to see you upstairs. Oh, my God. They probably heard the line about the tits. Mm. I'll see you in the bar, chaps. <coughs> are, you, uh, are you coming for a drink? <clears throat> yeah, I don't feel like it. Are you ill? <laughs> no, I just got uh, kind of a... Date. Well, I find a drink usually helps. Well, it's not really a date date. It's sort of like a date date, you know. Oh, there's, there's two of them. No, <laughs> just uh, me and uh, uh, her. You're being very mysterious. Is it the Queen Mother? <laughs> no, I just like to be discreet. Oh, of course, it's someone from the show, right? Which narrows it down to Alexandra, Cassie, or Teddy from Wardrobe. And as I'm going out with Teddy, it must be Cassie. No, as a matter of fact, it's, um, it's Alexandra. All right? Alexandra. Oh, you're crazy. Do you know that? I mean, what's that old Chinese proverb about dumping on your own doorstep? You're double dumping. I don't want to be around when this lot hits the fan. Look, don't judge everybody by your standards. We're just friends. Yeah, of course you are. Bosom pals. Yeah. Hey, that might work. What? Would you please scratch my bosom, pal? What? <laughs> Don't you get sick of eating out? Oh, yeah. I think I spent all my life eating in restaurants. I suppose that's why there's so many restaurant scenes in my shows. This is a lovely place. I like it. It's my neighborhood hangout kind of. Cheers. Oh, cheers. Hmm? Oh, cheers. Cheers. <laughs> you, uh, you eat out a lot? Yes. Funny, I should have thought you'd cook. Oh, I do cook. Hmm? What do you fancy? You have a specialty? Do you have a soul? Um... Mm. Beef Wellington. Mm. Too fattening. Anything else? Fish isn't fattening. No, beef Wellingtons. Well, actually, I make a chicken curry that would knock your socks off. Ah, that's why there's so many barefoot people in India. <laughs> My flatmate's a great cook, though. You know, I want to ask you about that. When a man and a woman share a flat, there's got to be some hanky-panky somewhere along the line. Have you heard about me and Ian? No. No. I'm leaving him. He's gay. Mm. Really? I had no idea. <laughs> I've had enough. But he always has been. Mm. He doesn't even bother to hide it anymore. Well, a lot of them don't these days. <laughs> I'm shocked. Does he ever bring anybody home? He never did it at home. I mean, that could be kind of uncomfortable. Well, we have an agreement. Hmm? For years, his secretary was the only person who knew about it. We don't bring anybody home. Well, he certainly fooled me. What? To spend the night, that is. Oh. Imagine going to bed with a man for years. We're both really old-fashioned. We don't sleep around. Uh. And then find out he's sleeping with men. Sleeping with men? I don't. Yeah. Who's what? sleeping with men? <laughs> Ian! Ian? Sleeping with men? Where did you hear that? Well, didn't you just say that Ian was gay? No, I, I think that... Uh... My Ian? <laughs> gay? I never said that. No, no, her flatmate's gay. Kelly, I huh? don't want the whole world to know. <laughs> Neither do I. About what? Ian! Who's Ian? Her gay husband. He's not gay! <laughs> I'm leaving Ian because he's a drunk. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Good morning, Jackie. Good morning, Kelly. Ah, let's see. Mmm, light base, mm. little powder, half a pound of polyfiller. 
<laughs> mm. Mm. So, what'd you do last night? Me? Yeah. Oh, that was a lot. Mm. What about you? Mm. Just had an early dinner and was in bed by 10. Oh. Hi. Hi. Morning. Hello. Uh, all right? Yeah, man. Do... do anything special last night? No, I had an early dinner and was in bed by 10. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. How are we today? Fine. Morning. 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 Hello. Good. Hello. Good. How are you? We'll start with the scene backstage in the dressing room at the Royal Gala, OK? All right. Good. Felix, don't forget about the nuns. Oh, yes, yes. What nuns? It's a Kelly Monty show, not the sound of music. It's nothing to worry about. Hmm? Just a group of people who drop in from time to time to see how television's made, that's all. Morning! Oh, good morning, Ivan. Just one thing. Yes, what is it now, Ivan? Shall I ask them to make up my right hand? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Can we talk about the fat side? Please? I'm, I'm a very busy man. man. <laughs> because of you, I drop everything. You... Oh, oh. excuse me. Hi, I'm Kelly Monteith. Thank you for sharing this dressing room. See, si. I'm Gregorio of the great Baldinis. Ah. This is my brother Giorgio. He not so great. Sandingo, birds and ping pong. Ah, nice to meet you. Don't touch me. What's the matter? Are radioactive or something? No, but my coat is full of birds and ping-pongs. Now, one nudge and the doves go crazy and there's ping-pongs everywhere. Ah, well. <laughs> Have a good rehearsal. Go! Oh. Oh. Scusi. You ready? Yes! God, I'm a nervous wreck! And this is just the rehearsal. Mm. What's everybody so nervous about, huh? Well, there'll be a lot of important people in the audience tonight. There'll be ambassadors, politicians. Ah, they're all full of, uh, how you say, crap. <laughs> Maybe so, but still. Ah, still nasty, eh? Everybody, they look to see these big shoot-up people out the front. Everybody's scared. He make me sick. Luigi, he get so scared, he wiggle his legs, eh? I stand on his feet, ten foot up. His legs go like this, I drop my balls. <laughs> How can you juggle your balls when your legs are going like this? <laughs> Bloody dumb! Gendo prendo rissingo de quendo quelle quelle. Oh, hi. Well, do I dump or don't I? You don't dump, you tinkle. I can't tinkle. Who ever heard of a pigeon saying, I think I'll go tinkle on his car? Huh? <laughs> pigeons don't tinkle, they dump. How do you know pigeons don't tinkle? Well, I don't, but I know they dump. Hmm. <clears throat> How about doo-doo? <laughs> Caca? Plop. <laughs> Plop works for me. Plop. Hmm. I think I'll go plop on his car. Plop is not bad. Well, I think plop works. Plop is good. It says it all. Well, are we all agreed on plop? I still like dump. Dump has got something, but it's not in the same league as plop. Believe me, in context, it works. All right, I suggest a compromise. Leave dump in, uh, but change the cat line to not kiss off. <laughs> okay, fine. Ah, I knew you were a reasonable man. Yeah, Enjoy the show. Thank, Thank you. So. Yeah. Yeah. I still prefer plop. Rehearsals went well today. I think we're in a pretty good state for tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, by the way, I've made a decision about the Venus de Milo. What's that? We'll get Cassie to record all the words we could think of for the female bosom. And then what do we do? And then we'll make a decision on which one to use. Mm. Well, that sounds like a decisive decision. Mm. Good. Oh, Cassie. Yeah. Would you mind staying on after uh, work tomorrow to record a voiceover? No, of course not. Good. Here you are, Mr. Monty. Here is your kite. <laughs> oh, <it's a> kite? <laughs> Would somebody please go on the floor and shoot that actor? <laughs> How many times have we done this scene? Six. So far, he said Keith, Kim, Kerr, Clive. Why can't he say key? What's so difficult about Cleep? I mean, key. He's just using the same hand. All right. Let's try it one more time. Are we still running? Yes. All right, Ronnie. <clears throat> and cue him. OK. Right, right. Uh, here is your key, Mr Monteith. You're sharing a dressing room with Mr Sandingo. 
He's done it. I don't believe it. He's done it. Oh. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Forget it. We'll use it. We'll go on to the backstage scene where Sandinger and Kelly are waiting to go on. Right? Good luck. Good luck yourself. You stupid son of a hell! You make me cock up it! Bow! Take your bow! As soon as you hear your music, give it a couple of seconds and then go on. What's the matter with you? You got a jelly legs. They could jiggle wiggle. Go on. Break an ass, bingo. <laughs> now look what you've done. You make these balls go everywhere. Get out of there, you're on. Oh, my God, my ex bouncing all over the floor. Oh, my God. <laughs> Thank God you only do jokes. Oh. Good luck. Oh, thanks, Hope babe. it goes well. Your Excellency, may I present Mr. Kelly Monteith? Ah, I enjoyed your speech very much. <laughs> speech? <laughs> but I do have a question. What's that, Your Excellency? What does the word dump mean? <laughs> oh, it means... Uh, uh... Is it like plop? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Your Excellency, uh, the great Valdinis. Grazie, grazie. I told you. <laughs> Here, Your Excellency, uh, this is uh, Sandingo. Ah! You were outstanding. You know, in my country, when we think a man has excelled himself, do you know what we do? No. We hug him like this. Oh! <laughs> Okay, chaps, come on, let's do this, and then we can all go to the bar and have a drink, right? Great. Yeah. Well, I don't know why you're changing it. There's too much profanity in this week's show, that's why. Well, this word isn't profane. Anyway, what are you changing it to? Boobs. Bazookas. Melons. Uh, melons. Melons? Melons? Yeah, melons, that's a funny word. Oh, it sounds absurd. Will somebody please scratch my left melon? Well, now that they've finished recording, I can show you the rest of the equipment we use. Okay, Reg, can we have the boom in, please? They're just tidying up a few technical hitches. Oh. Ready on sound? We'll be recording. Now, that's the producer. It's his job to ensure that we maintain a high moral tone. Come on, who's for boobs? Aye, aye. Why do you say it twice? I want two of them. <laughs> Melons? Hmm? Honkers. I like honkers. Whoppers? Wompers. <laughs> Venus de Milo didn't have wompers, bonkers, headlamps, bumpers or jugs. She had... Ladies, I think we'd better be leaving. Right. Oh. Hands up for tits. Honey, ladies, that's the code word for fire. <laughs> no, it's all right. We'll uh, do this bit first, OK? Let's do one with boobs for insurance, right? OK, mm. but I still think it's silly. Hey, you know what we forgot? What? what? Knockers! Would somebody please scratch my left knocker? <laughs> Cue music. I don't think knocker's very good. Mm. <laughs>